We have just celebrated Easter, and Easter is at the heart of the Christian message. And I'd just like to say to you in these next few minutes why I am a Christian and why we should all be Christians. The reason I am a Christian, I'll give you a number of reasons. The first reason is this, because Christianity is true. Christianity is not just based on the teaching of Jesus. It's not just based on the life of Jesus. It's not just based on the death of Jesus, but it's based on his resurrection. The resurrection of Jesus authenticated everything that he said and everything that he did. Jesus Christ is alive. If you're walking down a street, you get to the end of the street and it branches into two and you don't know which way to go, left, right, I don't know. There are two men lying there, one's dead, one's alive. Which one would you ask for directions? The reason I'm a Christian is because Jesus Christ is alive and I can trust him and believe him. That's my first reason, it's true. The second reason why I'm a Christian is because I am a broken person. And so are you, and only Jesus can fix us. The whole world, look at it, it's broken globally. It's broken socially. It's broken domestically. It's broken personally. Many governments of the world, many social agencies, many charities are trying to alleviate the symptoms. But if you try and alleviate the symptoms, you're always going to have the symptoms unless you deal with the root cause. There was a mother who said to her husband, darling, look after Annie for me, their little daughter. The father said, of course. He thought, what could he do to occupy his daughter? He's flicking through a magazine and he sees a map of the world. He says to his daughter, watch what I'm going to do. He cut the map of the world into small squares and he muddled the squares on the floor. He says, Annie, I want you to put the squares back together again to make the map of the world. When you've done that, come and find me. So the father thought that's bound to keep her busy. But a couple of minutes later, the little girl says, Daddy, I've done it. He thought she couldn't have done it. Went to have a look. All the squares were put in exactly the right place. He said, how did you know where to put all the squares? Ah, she said, when you were cutting the map out, I looked on the other side and I saw a picture of a man and a woman. And I thought if I could see the man and the woman and put them back together again, I could put the world back together again. Do you see the heart of the human problem is the problem of the human heart. And in the Bible, the Bible word to describe that heart disease, heart dis-ease, is sin. And it's because we have sinful hearts that the seeds come out of our hearts that pollute our lives, our relationships, our families, our communities, our countries. We're broken. I'm a Christian because it's true, because I'm broken, because only Jesus Christ can fix me. And that is exactly what Jesus Christ did for us. When he died upon that cross, it was as if he was cashing a check, signed with his own blood to say, here is the check to clear your overdraft. Do you know, when I became a Christian as a student, my mother said to me, you're brainwashed. And I said, mum, my brain has been washed. If you only knew what was in my brain, you would be pleased it got washed and it did get washed. I'm a Christian because it's true. I'm a Christian because I'm broken. I'm a Christian because only Jesus can fix me. I'm a Christian because Christianity works. 
I'd been a Christian since the 9th of February, 1975. I am still a Christian today. I have never been disappointed with Jesus. Jesus has sustained me, he has preserved me, he has encouraged me, and I know where I am going. Because in Jesus, I have that wonderful knowledge and experience that I have forgiveness from the past, I have new life today, and I have a hope for the future. I have seen Jesus work in my life. I have seen Jesus work in my family's life. I have seen Jesus work in the world. He works. He works. I've seen it. It's real. It's tangible. Again, can I encourage you in today's program, reach out to Jesus. This can become a reality for you. This can become an experience for you. It's true. You're broken. Only Jesus can fix you because of his cross and it works. So my encouragement to you is reach out and say yes to Jesus. Say yes to Jesus. Join me in this prayer. Jesus, I believe, yes, that you are the truth. I confess that I am a broken person. I believe that you're the only one that can fix me because of your cross. And so I ask you now, cleanse my life, set me free from the past, heal my life, and I pray that you will come into my life now by your Holy Spirit. Make me your child and help me from this day on to build my life on you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for hearing my prayer. Amen. Let me pray for you, for every one of you that has prayed that prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. I announce and I pronounce his forgiveness. May all condemnation leave you, all accusations leave you. May you experience renewal in your mind and in your heart. I pray now that you would be flooded with the presence, the peace, and the power of God's Holy Spirit. I pray that his spirit will well up within you to overflowing like springs of living water. I pray that the Lord will give you wisdom. I pray that he would guide your steps and he would guide your stops. I pray that you would know his protection in body, in mind, and in spirit. I pray for the blessing of God upon you, the blessing of God, the Holy Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. May you be blessed and may you be a channel of blessing to other people. And I pray all this in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 